firstly, we would like to welcome everyone to our first ever webinar on Digital Literacy for Seniors program. This is the first of the series and the objective of this program is to expose the seniors on how to invest online and to be mindful on scams, which are currently being perpetrated online. We also wish to share some tips on... A Okay, sorry, sorry, we also wish to share some tips on effective financial management practices. On behalf of SC, I wish to record our appreciation to hire seniors for his assistance to promote this program to all these registered seniors. Okay, just uh, before we begin, just a few housekeeping rules for this webinar session. Should you have any questions during the session, please log into Slido. Details will be shared in the next slide and on the chat function in the call. The panel We'll take as many questions as possible at the end of the webinar, should time permit. We will time and time again share links and reference points at the chat function for reference. Prizes for the pop quiz will be sent out to all winners within 14 working days. As the prizes will be sent out to the winner's email address, we appreciate if you could input your unique participant code sent together with this link as username for the Slido to ensure we have the correct email address, yeah? Okay. So uh, the agenda for today would be, I will start by giving a bit of a background on SC and its Investor Education Initiative, InvestSmart. Then I will briefly share some information on the current scams and steps taken to avoid from becoming a victim. We are pleased to have with us today, Mr. Wong Wai Ken, the country manager of Stash Away Malaysia, who is a panelist. Wai Ken will share with us on how to invest through digital investment management or DIM. We are also honored to have Ms. Nirmala from uh, Agency Counseling Dan Pengurusan Credit or AKPK to present on effective financial management practices for seniors. And last but not least, we will be having a pop quiz for all participants at the end of the session. A total of 1,500 in online vouchers are up for grabs. There will be five top winners and five consolation prizes. We will announce the winners at the end of the session. Next. Okay. This is the Slido. So to raise questions and participate in the pop quiz, please go to www.sli.do. Once you are on the main page, key in the code C814 to enter the Q&A and pop quiz section. Once in, you are already key in the questions under the Q&A tab. To participate in the pop quiz at the end of the webinar, please click the polls tab and key in the participant code that we have given you in our email. Next. Okay, that's the introduction. So for now, uh, okay, let's begin. Securities Commission was established in 1993 and is a self-funded statutory body entrusted with the responsibility to regulate and develop the Malaysian capital market. Products and services that are regulated under the SC are such as share trading, unit trusts, PRS, P2P, which is peer-to-peer -peer lending, digital assets, and of course, DIM, which Mr. Wong will be taking us through later. InvestSmart, on the other hand, is Securities Commission Malaysia's Investor Education Initiative that aims to create more informed investors who are self-reliant and are able to make investment decisions that are right for them. InvestSmart initiatives include the annual flagship investor education events such as InvestSmart Fest, Bersama InvestSmart at Borneo, SC in the Community, Talks, as well as the InvestSmart website, mobile application, online educational games, such as Jump to Invest, and frequent posting on our social media platforms, including Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and also YouTube. Okay, uh, next. Okay, um, okay, due to the current difficult times, we would like to highlight to investors the current schemes that are being perpetrated so that investors can be more vigilant when investing. The first is the clone scam. This is where scammers tend to pose as representatives of legitimate companies using lookalike company names and logo. Normally, this kind of schemes promises high returns with little or no risk and is marketed via social media. We therefore would like to urge investors to beware of their modus operandi and learn to protect yourself. They may appear to be the same, but not exactly the same, to be fair. Usually, these scammers will approach you through what or social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Hence, it is important for you to do an independent check by calling the legitimate company. Avoid from transferring payment to accounts belonging to individuals or to different companies. For example, just today, SC has included TD, Ameritrade, Eurotrade, 
and Oanda Malaysia into the alert list as these are clone of big companies based overseas. Next. Another very popular scheme, uh, scam which is being perpetrated currently is the too good to be true scheme. This scheme entices us with huge returns with a short period of time, just with a small investment. However, there's a catch to this. We will be subsequently told that we can withdraw the promised return only if we pay certain fees, which usually double or triple our initial investment amount, purportedly for regulatory bodies such as SCE, Bank Negara, and even Lembaga Hasil. Unfortunately, once we paid the amount, the scammers will no longer be contactable. As such, if a scheme appears too good to be true, it probably is. Next. Once again, we would like to stress to everyone to never ever deposit money into an individual bank account. If you have to make payment to the bank account of a company, you need to ensure that the company is legitimate. So yeah, next. Okay, as there are many scams, uh, especially during this difficult time, we would like to encourage investors to check our SC's investor alert list, which is available on our SC website before investing. The investor alert list is unauthorized websites, investment products, companies, and individuals. We would like to show you step-by-step -step on how to check this on our website. However, before doing so, let me quickly bring your attention to our SC's public register of license holders. Next. The SC's public register of license holders, on the other hand, is a search function available on the public to identify which entities or individuals are licensed by the SC. Licensing ensures an adequate level of investor protection, including the provision of sufficient safeguards to protect investors from default by market intermediaries or problems arising from the insolvency of such intermediaries. More importantly, it instills confidence among investors that the organization and people they deal with will treat them fairly and are efficient, honest, and financially sound. Okay, uh, I think let's just go to SC's website and I can give you a brief walkthrough. Okay, we will start with maneuvering the SC's investor alert list. So first, uh, we'll click to uh, the empower, uh, Investor Empowerment tab. From the drop-down box menu, you can choose Investor Alert List. Okay, once you're there, just scroll down and you're able to see the recently added entries. And as you scroll further below, you'll be able to search based on alphabetical order. So that will save you time, should you use. Yeah. So if you click the, uh, the, the alphabets, you'll be able to straight go to the particular company that you're looking for. Now, um, now we will go to SC's public register. So first you'll click the regulation tab. Then from the drop down box, you choose licensing. From there, you scroll down and click license and registered persons. Click it, and then from there, you click Public Register of License Holders. After you click that, you are able to search uh, either representatives or companies uh, of uh, the particular entity that you wish to invest in to ensure that they're actually licensed with the SC. Yeah? Okay, so now let's just go back to the slides. Okay. Uh, Next. Nevertheless, if you're still in doubt, uh, please do not hesitate to contact us by email, letter, or call us at our hotline at 03-6204-8999. Our contact is available on the website as well. Okay, next. Okay, uh, based on the survey we recently carried out with the seniors, registered with higher seniors, we noted that more than 30% of respondents invested in shares of companies listed on Bursa Malaysia. As such, we wish to highlight this annual general meeting corporate governance checklist that can be downloaded from the SC's website. The link is given in the chat column. Um, we'll get someone to share that. And uh, the checklist highlighted, highlights questions for shareholders to consider in preparation when attending an AGM. 
Also, we would like to invite all of you, especially those that have invested in shares of listed companies to do our survey on the conduct of fully virtual general meeting. Again, the link is given in the chat. For more information in the next uh, webinar, we will be covering topics like virtual EGM and the rights of shareholders. So stay tuned for our next webinar. Next. Okay, this is the last slide from me. Please do follow us on our social media platform for useful information and investing and latest updates on our initiatives. Now, uh, I would like to invite Mr. Wong Wai Ken to share his presentation on DIM. Okay, thanks, Jeanette. Um, while I transition to uh, my slides, I just also want to take the opportunity to thank the SC and InvestSmart for, for hosting us today. Um, my name is Ken. I'm the country manager of Stash Away. It might be new to some of you, but if you just do a quick Google search, you'll find out that we've been operating in Malaysia for quite a number of years now, and um, we're very proud to be licensed and regulated by the SC. So um, today I'll be walking through with you how exactly you can actually start to invest online. I want to also remind you that investing online me doesn't mean it's diff diff very different from um, the investing philosophies that you have learned in the past. Some of you are investors in Unitrust, some of you are investors in shares. So, uh, I'm sure all of you have FDs, you all have taken out loans before, you all have access EPF. So it doesn't mean that on, online investing means everything changes. So I'll, I'll talk about that as well. And then I'll be doing a very short demo about how you can actually start to invest using StashAway because I'm sure you, you guys are now um, maybe close to your retirement and uh, maybe you have retired early. Maybe you're still in your 50s or late 40s. Um, and, that, and that also means that you still need to put your retirement funds to work, right? So it doesn't mean that once you retire, you can just stop investing overall. I mean, uh, drawing from your EPF, leaving some there and also investing some outside in a, in a conservative way is probably a good way to, to squeeze some returns out of the money you have left. And of course, we want you to enjoy your retirement. So, so you know, the more you invest outside of EPF as well, it's probably good for you to stretch out those returns. Um, just a little, about, a little bit about me and, and the firm I represent. Um, like I said, my name is Ken. I have over 12 years of experience in the investing space. I started my investing career with Kazana in their investments division. And then I moved on to Afin Huang to become an investment banker for about five, six years. And then two and a half years ago, I started at StashAway. StashAway is a Singapore HQ company. Uh, down there, we are also regulated by the Monetary Authority of Singapore. Malaysia seemed like a very good market at the time. The SE also had some regulation around uh, new players like, like, us, like us. So we also got regulated and we launched two and a half years ago. So like Jeanette mentioned as well, I think it's always a very good idea to go to SC's website, especially the public register that you saw just now, to check out whether these new firms that are coming up are actually registered and licensed in Malaysia. So if you go to the website that was shown just now, if you type in Stash Away, we will come up and you will see that we are licensed as uh, to be a fund manager here. And I think when it comes to um, us, when it comes to tech companies, right, a lot of people always ask me, who is your target market? And my response, you know, before I'm actually gonna, before I actually say my response, people always say, I'm sure it's young people. I'm sure it's uni students and fresh graduates and all that. And as a wealth advisor or a digital wealth advisor, I always think it's, it is the whole range, right? Because you're digital, you're able to serve more people in different ways, right? Young people might be tech savvy, but it doesn't mean that uh, older generation, more experienced investors can't invest as well. And I know that a lot of my family and a lot of aunties and uncles I know are very tech savvy. When I was very, very hooked on Pokemon Go two years ago, I think three years ago, whenever I walk in the park, a lot of aunties and uncles. Whenever I go home for Chinese New Year, I see a lot of people playing Candy Crush. And sometimes my, my aunties are so better than me at Candy Crush, right? So I, I, I don't know how to play some of these games. So I think jumping to the conclusion that, that people in their 50s and all that, not tech savvy, I, I tend to disagree. I think it, the fact that you guys are here today already means that you want to learn and learning is a lifelong thing. So coming back to, to investing as well, I think 
what we're very used to in our market in Malaysia is the way you start investing is usually through an agent or you go to a branch. Those are uh, normal channels, nothing wrong with that, traditional channels. They are usually rep rep representing uh, you know, financial institution that they have been around for a very long time. But I think the, the good thing that, that innovation and digital companies bring to any market in the world, including uh, Malaysia, is that we can actually make the experience of investing better and also to make it cheaper. So um, convenience is also a big factor that we, that we, we like, to, um, like to emphasize because instead of meeting someone and listening to a kind of information that they're trying to promote or going into a branch to, to, to get a mortgage or to sign some documents or to renew your FD can be very, very um, troublesome. I think this whole COVID situation really showed how uh, reliant we are on all these traditional methods. And when you take them out of the picture, your life is, is, uh, is not the same as it was before. So then you see a lot of people transitioning to online channels. You see a lot of people order food online, a lot of restaurants go online, and it shows you that all these things can be done, right? I'm sure a lot of you already use online banking. So speaking about convenience, I'm sure you've heard of this term called user-friendly. User-friendly is a term that, that people throw around to, to basically say that you don't need to be coached on how exactly to use something because uh, using something that is user-friendly means that intuitively you already understand how to, to do it. So instead of meeting an agent or instead of walking into a branch and queuing up and taking numbers uh, and waiting, it is now very possible to invest online. And this is how our app looks. All you have to do is download it from your, your app store and onboarding takes about 15 minutes. I'll show you later very quickly. Um, you can also deposit uh, via online banking. Um, you can monitor your investments and you can withdraw and you can uh, do all that through your app. You can also use your desktop if you prefer. You can use your iPad if you prefer. The point is you can do it online. But at any point in time, if you want to reach out to us for support, we actually have real people on the phone and on WhatsApp who can actually address your queries. So you're not foregoing in-person interaction. You're just, we're just making things more accessible to you. And because we don't have the traditional cost structure of, of a, a large bank, you know, we are able to do things in a very lean and mean way. We also are able to lower the fees substantially. And as you know, fees is very important when it comes to investing because every percentage you pay in fees is coming out of your your gross return. If your return is 10% and you have to pay 5% in fees, then your, your, your net return, which is the return you really enjoy, is only 5%, right? So because we don't rely on agents, we don't have to, to pay them commissions, we don't rely on branches, so we don't have to pay all those fixed costs, our management fee is actually very, very low. It's only, it starts with 0.8%. And ultimately, let's say you invest one, we start with 1,000 ringgit. If you invest, you only have to pay eight ringgit a year, which is very, very low. Okay. So I, I, I say all this to, you know, just to do a bit of marketing, of course, but also to show you that with technology, it brings you a lot of convenience. It lowers the cost. And ultimately, investing is still really about growing your wealth, right? So I want to touch on some investing fundamentals before we go on to the, the demo. I will also talk a little bit about the EPF, about retirement, uh, saving during and close to your retirement. So it doesn't mean that you invest online means the fundamentals of investing have changed wholesale, right? It doesn't mean that, oh, suddenly you forget about risk reward. Suddenly you forget about your investment goals. I think you guys are already very experienced when it comes to a lot of things. So how you all decide about investing ultimately also um, doesn't change, right? And as long as what you understand about investing is, is fundamentally correct, you don't have to change your frame of mind when it comes to investing it, uh, online, especially. It, it just makes things easier. But just so we are on the same page, I think when we do public engagements like this, we like to give people a bit of a, a decision framework on, on, on four things to always consider before investing. And those things are your timeline before you actually need the money, your own risk tolerance, the need for you to diversify, and also uh, how much you pay in fees. So let me touch on this very, very quickly before moving on. So the timeline is very important because if you have a long time to invest, you can actually afford to take more risks. If let's say you are 10, 10 years away from your retirement, you can actually take some risks. But if you are two years away from your retirement, you should actually invest very conservatively. 
So um, timeline is very important. When do you actually need those funds? And, and, and that will dictate how much risk you take, right? If let's say you're one year away from your retirement, you're better off investing in a bond fund. But if you're 20 years away from your retirement, you can actually uh, go into risky, risky investments and, and try out new things. But closer to the, to the investment objective, you shouldn't take that much risk. Um, speaking about risk, risk tolerance is something that is also very personal to each and each and every one of us. It doesn't matter, you know, all these um, cliches, you know, sometimes they say women more conservative compared to men, but actually we see that that's not necessarily the case. It's just that women invest differently or they say younger, more risk-taking than older people. We don't see that necessarily the case. They are conservative young people as well. So really just listen to yourself and you know, if you invest in something new and it keeps you up at night, then it shouldn't, it, it really shouldn't make you that anxious. So the litmus test of whether it is right for you or not should be really, um, after you invest already, are you spending a lot of time thinking about it? Are you losing sleep? It's probably not right for, for you. It doesn't mean your friend will tell you, oh, I invest in this IPO or, oh, I invest in this new thing. It doesn't mean that it's necessarily for you. I'm sure you all also have experienced that People only tell you that they go and invest in something only after they make money. No one come to you and be like, hey, Chong, I, I lost some money. Like, no, no one will boast about losing money. They tell you about making money. Then they make you feel very, uh, like you've missed out, right? You know, very, very, um, uh, you know, you feel a bit like, oh, I wish you told me earlier so I can invest as well. But so don't take that approach, right? Just just fi fix yourself, fix yourself to the right risk tolerance and then you'll be fine. There's a lot of ways you can measure risk, like how much, uh, like like volatility, like how much value you have put at risk. A lot of ways you can actually measure risk, but how you feel is also very important. Okay, um, diversification is also very uh, is, is very important because ultimately diversified portfolios really protect your wealth. They go down less during tough times, especially during tough times like March and April this year, and because they go down less, they're more protected you can actually recover faster and in the long term, the cumulative returns of diversified portfolios are actually better. So don't think that, oh, I put all my money in one stock. I hope that it goes up. And then, you know, if it goes up and then you, 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 you take out or if it goes down and you take out then you go and find another one thing to put it in. You should spread your bets around because no one invests money to lose money. It's just that things move up and down in different points in time. Different asset classes perform differently in different points in time. So always ask yourself, if I invest in this thing, is this thing diversified? Or is this adding to my diversification? Maybe you, you start buying into uh, a lot of equities, a lot of stocks. Then you think, okay, maybe this adds to my diversification because I already have a lot of property. I have some cash, I have some bonds. Then this equities actually help me diversify. Or is what you're buying already very diversified maybe? Maybe it's a fund consisting of different asset classes, right? So diversification is key because different assets perform differently in different points in time. And ultimately you want to spread your bets around so that you can, you can actually have the best chance of holding on for the long term and, and making a gain out of your investments overall. And then last thing here is fees. Fees are very important. Like I said before, it doesn't mean the more expensive, the better. I think so, we, we, we are all very frugal people. We are all, you know, so do your comparison. If you're looking at two similar platforms, let's say two bond funds or two robo-advisors, do your homework and compare the, the fees because every percent you pay in fees comes out of your returns, okay? So, so those are the four things. Always consider them when you're thinking about investing. So let's move on into a little bit about retirement investing. So just to start off with some reminders, not trying to scare anyone here, but this is actually from EPF itself. The state of retirement in Malaysia is actually not that healthy. The average savings that people have at age 54 with EPF is only 210,000 ringgit. And if you really want to spread that money out over 20 years, you're looking at less than 900 ringgit every month. And 900 ringgit is less than minimum wage. How can you live your golden years at less than minimum wage? And the reality is that no one really spreads it out that well. People are not very disciplined and they tend to run out of their EPF money within five years. So that's a very big concern. And, and I think it is important to contribute to your EPF as long as you're working, of, of course. 
but it's also important to invest outside of your EPF so that when you retire, you have different nest eggs to draw from. And just to show you how little people have when it comes to retirement, only 1% of, of, of EPF contributors in Malaysia have more than 700,000 in their EPF accounts. And, and some might think, and as a lump sum, 700,000, 1 million seems like a lot of money. But when you really spread it out over your life expectancy, 15, 20 years after you retire, that is not a lot of money, right? Because you are only taking uh, 3,000 uh, every month for those 20 years. And I don't know if 3,000 is enough to sustain um, and enjoy your retirement. So I urge you all to realize the situation. All of you will have different EPF savings. At least know how much is in there, first and foremost, and then look to also add to it. And, and, and when you retire at the time, be very, very prudent about how you, how you spread it out. You don't have to take all, all your EPF money at once. You can take it out uh, year by year, month by month, up to you. So I'm sure you all also already know, and, and this is a bit of a refresher, as you, as you reach 50, EPF already primes you for retirement and to help you access your money. So if you're 50, you can take out of account two, which is 30% of your EPF account. At 55, you can actually make full or partial withdrawals already. If you continue to work, like a lot of my former colleagues at the bank, you know, up past 55, they still work because they are getting decent salary and retirement is very boring to them. They continue working into their 60s. You will go into this account called account amass. And after 60, you can withdraw everything out of your account 55 and your account amass. Okay, so at different points in time, you can access money at a, at, from different accounts. So apart from EPF, I would also say that it's important to invest outside of, um, outside of EPF as well, because you must diversify first and foremost, but also uh, EPF alone will not be enough, especially if you say you want to live on 5,000 or 10,000 every month. So well, let's talk a little bit about investments as it as it relates to outside EPF, yeah? So, you know, when you are younger, it's probably better to actually invest in higher risk. But as you approach retirement, you should decrease the risk as you, as, as you go along. So the, the rule of thumb here is to have your age as a percentage in bonds or protective assets. So let's say you are 50 years old, you should have 50% of your portfolio in bonds or protective assets. So that ultimately when you reach retirement, say at 60 years old, uh, you have you you are not putting a lot of money at risk, yeah. So once you retire, so it doesn't mean that you stop investing overall. Of course, you can leave some in EPF, but you know if you want to manage that money yourself, you can invest in things like property to get a good uh, a good yield into REITs to get a good yield. You can invest in cash and I mean FDs, uh, something that doesn't take any risk. You can also invest in stocks if you are an experienced uh, investor of your own. You but you know. Since you're already retired, I would stick to very, um, very safe blue chips that are in sectors that are recession proof because you don't want your stock portfolio to go up and down so much. So, you know, things like consumer staples, your uh, utilities, your healthcare sectors, those are the things you should look at for capital growth in your retirement years. Okay, so that's just, just some general rules about how uh, people nearing the, their retirement age should, should uh, manage their money. And let me just share with you a bit about how Stashaway manages money. So we build portfolios using uh, what we call, uh, what is called ETFs. So ETFs stand for exchange traded funds. And we put these ETFs together into a portfolio. And I'm sure for some of you who have invested in unit trust, you are used to the concept of funds. We have 12 funds for you to choose from. They have different risk levels. Uh, this is the lowest risk level. So you will see the label of our fund here is 6.5%. And 6.5% is an indicator of risk. We like to market the, our approach to risk as opposed to saying, oh, this fund will make you certain amount of returns. Because one thing that we cannot guarantee is returns. But what we can at least quantify is risk. So this statutory risk index of 6.5% is actually equivalent to 95% bonds, which is very, very conservative. So you can see here the mix of uh, different ETFs that we put together to make a fund. And you can see it's very diversified in the sense that there's equities, there's bonds, there's, there's a healthy amount of gold in there as well. And then of course there's, there's bonds, okay? So we have 12 of these, gonna show you one more, some one, one which is quite balanced. This one is, uh, has a risk index of 
and this one has uh, is equivalent to 60% equities, 40% bonds. The equity portion, you can see here the different sectors that are that are available. And then for the bond side, um, also you can see uh, emerging markets and international bonds, as well as gold. So you can see that each portfolio has multiple asset classes, equities, bonds, gold, and, uh, and just a little bit in cash. We are not like traditional funds where it's all equity or all bonds. Um, and also we don't really market like different flavors, you know, like, oh, a Vietnam fund or China fund and all that. For us, it's all about how much risk you do, do you want to take? And we invest in internationally for you, okay? So if you are not so confident about choosing your own portfolio, we guide you as well. So for example, if you, if you click on, on uh, if, you, if you don't really want to choose your own portfolio, you can click on, uh, in the app you will see, it's called goal-based investing. So all you need to know is what investment goals you have. And then we have different prompts over there to help you quantify the goal and also recommend you a portfolio, okay? So here we've got plan for retirement here. And let's just say you put in, um, expected age of retirement is 60 and you want to actually draw 10,000 from, from your investments and EPF when you retire. Um, you want to live on 10,000 every month, that is. And then you say, okay, maybe I want to have a nest egg that will last me 20 years. And then you, you expect that you would take out 2,000 every month from EPF. And then we've got a few more other questions, but you know, to refine the whole thing. So the goal is to have something like 5 million, but because, you know, this person could be quite young, it's like in, in 29 years. So depending on your age, the number will be different. And of course, it also includes inflation. Inflation is something that creeps up on us. And then tomorrow's money is not the same as today's money. So this includes inflation. Okay, so, so if you're not so confident on which out of the 12 portfolios to choose, you can use some of these goals to actually guide you towards picking the right thing. Once you invested already, the asset classes, um, and sorry, the portfolio looks like this. We show you all the different asset classes that you have inside your portfolio. And then each one of these uh, are those ETFs I talked about. Each one of these have, uh, each one of these are an ETF. So we put together seven or nine ETFs together to form a fund. Okay. So this is the, the whole app I, I, I showed you all just now. And what you have, uh, what we have on top of this as well is, um, is a different kind of service, which gives us a 2.4% projected rate. So this is something that we take very, very little risk on because it's, uh, it's a, basically a fund that only invests in FDs. But the added benefit of this is that you don't actually have to lock up your money. I'm sure when you go to banks and all that, there are a lot of opportunities to, to invest in FDs and opportunities to invest in close-ended funds to give you a certain return, but you need to lock up your money. Um, we want to make that experience a little bit better. So we come up with a separate service called Stash Ray Simple to give you 2.4%. And this one is, um, is very basic because all you have to do is, put, is invest however much you want with no lockups and you will get the 2.4% per annum, okay? So if you want, there's more information on our website. I just wanted to briefly show you this. And then let's get into the demo to show you how easy it is to get started. So um, if you download it from the, um, from the, from the, your app store, you'll be greeted with this um, welcome screen. Uh, all you have to do is click start investing. We will need your name and password to create a new account. Once you click into that, we'll just get your basic details or your age and some, some, some details some of your uh, date of birth, phone number, that's usual. We will also, you will also get an OTP similar to, to those uh, security kind of purchases you make online, you'll get an OTP and then you just put that in and you can progress. Here is your address, yeah, just put that in. And then you can actually put in your IC number and upload a picture of your IC. So that is compulsory because we need to screen your IC to make sure that uh, you are the person who is applying for this, for this service. So when you reach this stage, all you have to do is click here and then you can take a picture of your IC if you have it on hand. 
if you don't have it on hand, maybe you're at a coffee shop and you didn't bring your wallet, you can always click send later, but we need your IC before we can begin. Okay, so after your sign up, you will need to create a, a portfolio, like I mentioned before, and this is a bit of a demo to show the uh, to show you a real example of, of, of how it actually happens, okay? I'll narrate as we go along. So once you click and log in, um, this is how it usually looks like. But when you, yep, this is the home screen. You can see the top there, there are some articles. But when you sign on that time, you'll need to click, uh, you need to create a new portfolio. You have two choices, general investing, um, which is where you pick your own portfolio. So let me just back up a little bit. So you have two choices in the general investing where you choose your own portfolio. Core means uh, low risk to medium risk. High risk is higher risk portfolios. We don't want to put them all into one shelf because if people just max out the risk, it can be a bit dangerous if they don't know what they're doing. So you'll see that with, uh, if you click core, that you can choose from nine different portfolios, okay? So, the best way to choose the portfolio is to see what is inside, which is why if you click the, the slider, you can actually see your asset allocation change. For example, you can see, oh, okay, this one is the risk index 22, quite aggressive. You have quite a lot of equities in there and, and then some gold, some bonds and all that. Everything is mixed, but the percentage of the equities part is higher because you're, you're going into a more aggressive fund. If you don't want, you can always dial it a little bit back. You can see the equity exposure is less. So you can click on the equities part and see exactly what ETFs go in there as well. There's some explanation there. You can see we invest quite internationally. If you click on the commodity side, you see we, we invest in gold. If you click on the bond side, you can see what bond ETFs we use. Okay. So you can also click on the higher risk one to see what are the options for, for higher risk portfolios. If you're near retirement, I would only suggest that you use the, the balance or low risk ones. Okay, here you can also, same like just now, you can see what ETFs we expose you to. The different ETFs we put into your portfolio is all there. Okay, so if you don't know what to choose, you can also click um, goal-based investing where you pick what you want to invest for and then we guide you, okay? So example, if you click plan for retirement, you can put in the different uh, inputs. Let's say you want to invest, uh, sorry, you want to draw 10,000 every month. Okay. And then, you know, you can change these prompts. Let's say you want to expect 2,000 from your, from your EPF every month or 1,000 in this situation. Then we estimate for you how much you put aside. And once you click continue, we actually give you a portfolio, yeah? So it'll be different for, for all of us because it depends on your age and how far you are away from retirement. And just like the other step before, you can see what is in your asset allocation. You can see what ETFs we invest uh, that make up your fund, okay? So that's how to set up the, the, that is how to select your investments. So um, let's move on to, okay. This is how to make a deposit. So it's also very, very simple. Once you've already set up, once you've already chosen your, your, your portfolio, you can see here, you can monitor the performance, how well you've done over the print over versus the principal you have, you have put in. You can see the returns, you can see your deposits, and then you can see the returns, okay? You can also see what is in your portfolio. You can, can just scroll down and look at all the ETFs and how well they've done. So when you want to, to put in money, all you have to do is click these three circles and then click deposit and then choose the method of which you want to deposit. You can use direct debit or you can use manual deposit. If you use manual, we will need you to access your online banking and put in some of this information. And then the money will come into our trust account. Okay, so let's say you want to put uh, 1,000 ringgit into your portfolio. We will show you the, the banking details we need from you. Okay, it's like making an online transfer. 
there's strong pay, like you pay your bills. And there's also a uh, manual where you can also see the details to put into your online banking for us to, to receive the money. So all you can see here, like the ads before the, the, the today's talk, you can see that it's very dangerous to transfer money into someone's personal account. So you'll see here that we use specific trustees. It's a trust account. And then make sure you put in your own reference code. It will be different for everyone. And then ultimately, we will get your money with the reference code. And once you click done, the money will come into our trust account. Okay. So it's as simple as that. And when you want to, when you want to withdraw, it's also very, very easy. Okay. So let's say you want to take out some money, you will, you will get it back within three days, but you initiate it by clicking on the three dots, clicking on withdraw. Okay. And then just tell us a little bit about the withdrawal, why you want to withdraw. It can be for personal reasons. You choose how much you want to withdraw. And then you select a bank account that you want to withdraw it to. And then you're done. Once you click continue, it will go to the, the bank account. It will take around two, two to three days because we have to sell your securities and bring the money back to Malaysia and, uh, and, and transfer it to your bank account. So give us some, some wiggle room. It's the same like unit trust. It takes a few days, but that's considered quite liquid. Okay. So um, that's all I have for us today. I'm happy to take questions later on. Just in closing, just to share what I've covered today, essentially you, you're quite experienced when it comes to investing and when you invest online, the benefits of doing so is that it's very convenient. You can use your, your laptop or your iPad, use your, your phone to just download an app and start using it. And it's also a lot cheaper because the way we service customers is a lot more lean. So we don't have to charge customers more money. And ultimately, um, the, the way in which you invest and your, your philosophies around investing doesn't need to change. At the end of the day, just because it's online, it doesn't mean it's very different, right? It's just that it makes it more convenient for you. So you have to think about your philosophy when it comes to investing. What are you investing for? How far do you have from your investment goal? What is your risk tolerance? Um, does this add to my diversification? You know, you have to ask yourself. And of course, do your shopping and compare the fees. And once you already start to invest, you can always contact us via WhatsApp. Inside the, the app itself, there's a WhatsApp button. You can click there or you can call us or you can also email us at support at stashway.my. So we actually have, actually have a full-time customer service team based in Malaysia. So we can actually uh, look into your queries in a very personal level. So don't think that you're dealing with like a chat board or like, you know, when you, when you go and try and book your airline ticket, you're very frustrated because you don't really know what's going on. This For us, you're dealing with a person and we will really look at solving your issues. So thank you very much. Upcoming, there's a very interesting talk by AKPK and I'll stick around for Q&A as well. Okay, back to you, Jeanette. Okay, thank you very much, Raiken, for the interesting presentation. Uh, now we'd like to invite Nirmala from AKPK. Uh, to give her presentation. Nirmala, are you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Okay. Hi. Hey, good evening, everybody. What an interesting presentation by YK. So I also was listening and then I, I was not prepared. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much uh, to InvestMart. Thank you to SC for having us as well. Uh, we're glad to be here on in evening and thank you to all the listeners. You guys are staying on to listen in the evening when there's a lot of uh, drama series going on. But thank you for taking the time to actually listening. You know, this is this is actually a, a very, very important topic in terms of how to actually uh, preserve uh, the funds and how to manage our funds later during retirement. Or if you're already in retirement, I did see somebody comment that uh, I'm already 60 plus. Yeah. So yeah, you know, so we've got to now learn how to manage these funds here at this point in time. And, and um, so I'm just going to go on very shortly and then we'll take some questions. So I'm Nimala from AKPK. As you all know, AKPK uh, is actually an agency under Bank Negara Malaysia. 
uh, agency counseling dan pengurusan kredit. So we actually are into uh, financial education, uh, financial. So uh, coming to retirement here, uh, we have. I mean, Wai Chong has also. Uh, sorry, uh, Wai. I'm um, Wai Ken Wong has also shared that uh, you know retirement he shared the amount of money we have and then uh, it's also stated that our life expectancy is actually around 75 and where female live around up to i mean this is an average yeah it can be longer so this is like 78.2 and male is about 73.5 i do not know why will uh, female live longer so i was also listening at this time that uh, female are actually, you know, everywhere, everywhere they live longer. So the more reasons why we actually need many answers, yeah. So this is like one of the lifespan and that's not earlier we saw that, oh, the money is not enough there. It's 800 plus, it, that's an average, that, that, that's a yeah, average. That's the amount of money that most of us have in the account. So how are they going to sustain, yeah? And uh, as I said, challenge number two, insufficient fund. And uh, not going to talk about, but I want to talk about this challenge number three, insufficient fund, because some of them actually um, spend all their savings on their children and uh, hoping that the children would take care. But these are some life stories that we have seen actually that, you know, at the end of the day, they did not have anything for themselves. So it's so important on how do you actually plan your finances uh, prior to retirement and also during retirement. Be careful. The advice is if you don't have any plan to do with the money, don't withdraw the money yet. Because the moment you withdraw the money, there'll be, you know, my money has this issue. It is never enough. So the moment you withdraw the money, you will end up spending everything. And by the time you know it, two years, one year, I thought, I know, I averagely, EPF said three years people spend their money finish. I mean, they, they kind of like finish all their saving. I've asked, uh, I've always done talks and uh, this thing, I've asked people, they say people, one, where three years last, six months also enough already, everything gone, you know. So we have seen cases like within six months, within, within a year, it's gone. So after that, for the rest of the 74 years, so how, how are we going to manage? So the best is actually trying to grow that money, which, which we will talk later too. So be careful where you're going to spend, yeah? How they manage their funds. A lot of them wants to buy a sports car. You know, I know, I know this trend of having the big bikes are very common in Malaysia now. And we always thought uh, these big bikes, the drivers are actually young, uh, handsome, like the one we watch in the movie. But you don't be surprised that most of them are elderly now. Uh, it's because it's living their dream. Okay, I could not afford all this then. So now I want to live my dream. So the, the first thing I want to get is all these things so that I can go on a cruise, road cruise. Throughout. No harm. No harm at all. No wrong to it at all. But just be careful that it's not taking a big chunk from your retirement savings. Yeah. You, if you had planned for it, awesome, because that's what retirement is about. It's living your dream, right? It's living what you want to do. But you have to ensure that the funds are not a big chunk. Uh, you're not starting up a new loan for that. And so that you, you can manage it. It's a small percentage uh, so that you can still sustain your livelihood. Yeah. So that's also very important. So when we look at the overall financial management, this is how we started. You know, when we were, uh, when we started working, we were at the current assets, and then we are accumulating for our future assets, with it, which is that the retirement age. And if you notice, I don't put what is the retirement age here because you decide when you want to retire. Nobody else decides. So you decide when you want to retire. It can even be beyond 60, no problem. Because some of them told me, many of them have told me that I enjoy working. So why should I retire? True. But once comes to a certain, I mean, when it comes to a certain age, you are enjoying what you're doing. So you don't really, you're not really doing it for commitments to settle payments and things like that. You just enjoy it yeah so uh that's what we talk about retirement you are you have this financial freedom where your incomes are enough to help you enjoy and 
and allow you to do things that makes you happy. So happiness is what we are looking for, sustainable happiness. Yeah? So after that, the very important thing is the wealth distribution and preservation. So will writing, uh, uh, preserving what you have now, how do you make them last? How do you plan? So the best way is actually investing a certain portion of it. So you, you can still earn from a dividend, uh, you can still earn the dividend out of it and it can sustain a livelihood. And then of course you have to have this estate planning version of that. You have to have uh, a will or this thing so that, you know, the after, uh, the, the, the protection is there, right? So of course also with protection, yeah? So when we look is, if you're heading towards retirement, like say in a year or two, please understand and uh, do a budget now, do your expenses count now and see how much do you actually need to sustain a livelihood? How much at least a month would you need? Yeah, you. Some of us will think after I retire, what am I going to spend for? Nothing. You know, you, you will still spend. It's just a difference. You may not be spending for transport to work, but you'll be spending on other things here. So you still got to think, uh, you have functions to attend, you have weddings to attend, you have uncles to give, you know, you have all those things, you have grandchildren, and you know, they, they you have expenses, all of this there. So these are the things that we need to know, okay, when we retire, what are the expenses we still have to pay, yeah? And then try to grow whatever you have, a certain portion, your retirement saving, still keep trying to grow them. So uh, earlier, there was a lot of uh, advice from why, uh, saying where you can actually invest, how you can actually, what you should look at before you invest, uh, what should you be careful of, invest scam has, uh, I mean, earlier Jean Jeanette has also shared on the scams, yeah, be careful. So, so, so this is the thing that we want to say, protect what you have also. Um, I have seen personally at AKPK, we don't deal with scams, but I have seen many of my clients who got into problem with scams and they actually use borrowed money. So that's another sad part. Every day without fail in the newspaper, we are hearing uh, a lady lost 3.8 million, a guy lost 722,000. And a lot of them are, are the ones that they, they are using their retirement funds here. Recently, I also heard from um, Peng Nagara, there was a teacher who lost all her savings, her graduate money of 300 over 1,000, just because, you know, the, these calls that they received, hey, look, uh, there's this authority looking for you. Uh, uh, we have your, we have you, we are calling from the authority. You have to make this payment. If not, you know, so and so. If not, we will come in to arrest you. So, so all these things happen. So they get panicked and they immediately kind of like pay off the money. So please, please protect what you have and manage the assets. The other most important thing here is also in terms of borrowing. Yeah, we do have a lot of people who are nearing their retirement are still taking up loans and there's no plan of when are you going to settle these loans uh, like you know before you retire can you actually settle them out yeah because and also credit cards yeah please be careful with credit cards because i have seen my clients um after retirement they tend to use their credit cards every time for purchases and the easiest way to settle credit cards is you know you take up your savings and you keep settling so this credit card has this thing that it tells you that you're going to change. Uh, it tells you like, we, we kind of like, okay, this is the last time I'm going to use the credit card because it keeps eating up my savings. I'm going to stop using credit card. But eventually we end up using it more and more and get, and that kind of like eat up the whole saving. So it kind of just went off for our usage. Yeah. So if we find ourselves a person who has got least discipline with credit cards, like we kind of like, if we have that card with us, we enter the mall and that's it. You know, we, we end up spending or even if we, we continue to do that. So please be very careful. Uh, try to look. So one of the ways that we always say that to know if you are highly indebted or not, are you facing problems of financial uh, in terms of are you on a high debt ratio is to know your debt to income ratio. One of the best ways is so it's very simple. All you have to do is list down the, the number of debt 
debts. I mean, the, the amount, the installments that you pay for your debt. So every month, for example, you have car installments, you have housing installments. So how much do you pay for them? You list down that amount and you divide over your net income. And, and times with 100, you will know from your income, what's the percentage like that's going off for debt repayment. So even... Even if it's after retirement, I mean, even if it's during retirement, you have withdrawn your money. So you have this allocation of monthly, this is my usage. So that you can actually spread out the, the, the funds that you have. So monthly for my expenses to sustain, I would need, up, need this much. And if you still have debts to pay, then you need to calculate what is the debt to income ratio? What is the commitment that I'm paying for? So whatever it is, even before our retirement, you got to see this and you... If you want to take any debt, also make sure that it's not more than 60% of your income. So today, if you are still paying loans, please calculate. If you see that the amount is below 40% from your income, good, that's a good sign. We, we always recommend 40 for loans, 60 for living expenses. But if you see yourself anywhere above 60, then please come to AKPK and let us help you restructure to reduce the amount because if it's very high it will actually uh it will it will not you will have very less cash flow and that will really not be enough for your living expenses that's why people feel tight and keep you know keep taking new loans after another one after another and it keeps my uh personal i've been with akpk for 11 years now my oldest client was 72 years old i remember he was in business so he kept trying new business and new 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 ones. And every time he tried, it was through loans. You know, he kept using through loans and loans and loans. His total debt, I remember, was close to about 55,000 ringgit over credit cards, over this and this. At 72, you know, you are still uh, struggling to come in to pay debts. You know, it's, I felt very, very sorry for him. But that's how, you know, you... The, the importance of managing what you have is more of growing and, and it's not you're not looking for really high but it's actually more into sustaining a livelihood you know sustaining still got dreams to live we have listened um talks by inspiring people who have retired you know how they travel around the world how they they have they are enjoying their retirement you know so things like that we want we want that also but this financial management is the key to it yeah so if you do have uh, family members or you are facing financial, uh, I mean, debt issues, please come to AKPK. We are now, uh, this is our website, www.akpk.org.my. You can actually click here to gain financial counseling. We, you can even come to us for just pure financial counseling. You want to ask advice. But the only thing we can't help you with is by recommending products. We, we can't sell products, so we can't recommend products. But we can help you in terms of you know budgeting issues. We can guide you along that. Yeah. And if it's some debt problems, we can help negotiate with the financer to get a restructured repayment plan, which is affordable by the borrower and acceptable by the financer. Yeah. So it's very simple now. We are all online due to the CMCO. So you can actually go into our website here. And then uh, this is, you can click in into general inquiries that you want to ask something and our counselor would actually call you back. And uh, please remember our services are free of charge. We do not charge anybody on personal financial counseling or debt management program because there are some people out there who are using our name. They would call you up and they say, hey, uh, are, you, are you having that problem? We can help you uh, restructure the whole thing. We can do everything with AKPK, uh, much more simpler and guarantee approved. Uh, we love to hear the word guarantee approved when uh, no need because we are the ones dealing with the bank. The bank has to agree, yeah? So, and then they say to guarantee approval, you just pay 8% commission of the loan uh, balance that you have. Why do you want to pay that much when you can actually use that money and pay up the loans here? Yeah. And this service is totally free of charge and it's a very simple process. And currently, we are also helping with uh, micro enterprises. So, if you do have uh, issues with financial, uh, with financing issues, business financing issues, you can also click in for these micro help desk, and our people will call you to talk to you and see what's the problem. Remember, financial problem, having financial problem doesn't mean you know, things are bad and things, but 
it's a way to actually, uh, I mean, it's not, you, you just got to find a solution for that and we are here to help you on that, yeah? So uh, we provide financial counseling, uh, documents that we require is also very simple and uh, we help those who are having actually uh, financially distressed or even just need financial counseling, like I mentioned, budgeting or cash flow management, yeah? So uh, the steps towards retirement, pay attention to your health, health is wealth, yeah? mental health, health is wealth. Yeah? So like uh, I like when why, why say that um, to know that whether you're in the right investment or not to see whether if you can sleep at night or not. So if you keep thinking about that investment, then yeah, it's a high risk thing. That's a good way. Same thing with your debts also. Yeah? So if too much of it, you can't really sleep also. And a lot of us have this habit of taking new debts to settle old debts. So that is a never ending story, but not happily ever after. So please, please be careful. Yeah? It's not the solution at all. Yeah? So pay attention to your health. Yeah? Uh, don't, uh, sorry, I, yeah. Don't regret. Yeah? Don't, uh, I need to, yeah, don't harbor regrets and grudges. Yeah? Forget all that. Make, socialize with people who make you happy. We are going on this sustainable happiness mode. We want to just do things that make you happy, yeah? But what makes you happy is you need people who continuously motivate you, yeah? So if everybody, if their friends, the kind who's criticizing all the time and makes you down, drop them, not worth it, yeah? And uh, do what you want that makes you happy, like I said, but, and also see what you can do. But all this is within your, your means, yeah? All this is within your means, within the budget that you have, within the finances that you have, so that uh, you don't use something that, you know, you don't have to do this all on borrowed money, and that's the risk, yeah? So it's all planning and spreading out the finances that you have, trying to grow what you have so that you can actually sustain a, a better livelihood and contribute back to the society. There's so much that we can do after retirement, and of all, the 60 second is having fun, yeah? So it's not, uh, at AKPK, we always say it's not really at how much you earn, but it's so much of how you manage what you earn. And uh, let's begin now to manage. And our number would be 2616-7766. So I can take in some questions after that. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Okay, thank you very much, Nirmala, for sharing your presentation, hey, everyone. Uh, so, um, for now, uh, we will be going to the Q&A. Uh, maybe I can start with Yken. Uh, Yken, I understand that you've also helped us reply some of the, the, the questions, queries on the chat. Uh, so, those I'm not going to uh, ask you now again. Uh, but the ones that we actually managed to get is two, which is, uh, can I change my investment plan later, one? And uh, number two is, do you have any Sharia compliant fund? Uh, okay, so I'll take the first one, for, uh, first one first. So, yeah, you can change your portfolio anytime. So, like I said before, you have we have twelve to choose from. Let's say you want to take a risky one to start off with, and then you want to to change it a bit lower as you as you as you near retirement or if you pass retirement, you always can just uh, reduce it, and there's no fees attached to that as well. Um, and before you commit to the new fund, you can always see what's in it before you before you commit. And uh, our funds are completely conventional. Uh, that, that means not, not Sharia. But then the stash away simple, like I mentioned just now, the one to manage all your spare cash, that one, 2.4% is Sharia. There's another company out there that is very similar to us. Uh, they have the same uh, uh, license as us as well. They're called uh, Wahed Invest. That's W-A-H-E-D. I don't work for them, but I'm their, I guess I would say like I'm their conventional brother. Lah. So the so Wahid is, is Sharia. And if you look up what they do, they do something very similar to us. Okay. Uh, and the second question is, uh, okay, okay, sorry, done. Okay, all right. Thank you very much, Mike. Uh, for Nirmala, um, we have a question, we have question, uh, we have two questions for you as well, uh, which is uh, how much should I have in my savings in order to retire comfortably? And number two is, how much should I save monthly? Huh. How much you have is, is, I mean, a simple way, I mean, to say everybody is different, yeah, because the, our expectations and our living styles are different, yeah? So what you can, a simple way, but uh, uh, it's not a, it's not 100% a 
accurate, but it's a very simple way is now you need to know how much do you need for your living expenses, your basic living expenses, how much do you need? So for example, if you need per month at least about 2,000 ringgit just to have for your bills and everything. But if you're 40 now, so you have like another 20 years to retire, but at 40 now you need this much. So in 20 years with inflation and everything that it could be, it could be 4,000 ringgit then. So then with at 60, if you're planning to retire and you would at least need 4,000 ringgit a month, so then you will calculate among at least for 20 years, how much would that be? So that will be a basis for a simple calculation to know how much would you need for your savings. Yeah, And of course, I'm calculating that 20 years left after retirement is without any inflation or anything. I'm just doing a, a calculation like that. So inflation will still be there. We have additional expenses like medical and all that. Uh, we want to travel more. So things like that, that's where we have to ensure that that amount after retirement still can be invested and we still do earn a dividend or we still continuously earn an amount. Yeah? So exactly how much is totally depending on how much you're actually spending for yourself now. For, your, your, for you to live comfortably now, that's the most the amount you're going to spend with you. So you can actually spread it out and see how much would you need in your saving. So how much would you need to save a month? That also depends on where you are now and what age you are now. If you're starting earlier, good. You're very lucky. You, you get a smaller amount. But of course, if you are starting later, you have to put a bigger amount. Also, you have that end goal. So this is like, let's say you're looking at 2 million. But you ask me, uh, on a on a moderate uh, lifestyle also it's almost two million you know to look at the amount uh, so you're looking at that amount then now you've got to see where let's say you're 40 so you're going to see where what is your savings like what you have you can use if you are EPF contributor you can go to their calculator they, they can estimate for you what is your retirement fund might be like so then you can already see what's the difference then you can see where's the shortfall, how much is the shortfall, then please look for alternate savings, put up in alternate savings and see how you can make that up. So as I said, if you're starting early, you're lucky, but no harm, you're starting later, you just have to put a little bit more, or, or you may have to change a little bit of our lifestyle later, or maybe we have to like extend our retirement, so that's how it works. So uh, an exact amount, I can't give you because it, it is your lifestyle here that matters. Thanks. Okay, thank you very much, Nimala and I can. Uh, I think, uh, wait, let me check. I think there's a few more questions on the chat. Let's see whether we can address it. I'm sorry, so should I continue to invest or preserve my wealth? I think <laughs> Nimala is it. <laughs> yeah, you, you probably could uh, to, to actually uh you you can the preservation could be in a smaller percentage you know so has you but you you still it's good to have because you would not know if there's uh, other other emergencies coming up in things like that you know so it's more of like if you if you have things to do yeah you will be spending the money but it's good to have a, a base on on a preservation mode as well so there'll be a continuity of income for you continuously yeah so preserving is like you're earning something out of it as well. So we will never know uh, what emergencies can happen when. So it's always good to keep a certain amount. But of course, the percentage can change, you know. Yeah. OK, thank you very much, Jamala. And I think I can address Patrick Chu's question as well. But uh, OK, I think um, since it's 9, well, close to 15, uh, can, shall we move on to our pop quiz session? Uh, can uh, th thank you, Wan Ken and your mother once again.